a, a simple word like ball. Okay, my lips have to close. Air pressure has to be built up just behind the lips. Unless that is there, ball. And it has to be released with an audible closure. That is just for ball. At my vocal cords have to vibrate. Vocal cords are, and all simultaneously. Mm. Right? It's synchronized movement. Just to say the word for first sound, ball. For that, my tongue has to be, because it is ba, it's not ba, 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 ba. If, if it is a ba, my tongue has to be backward. A oh, is a back sound, back vowel. That's for a. Oh. Then for ba, my lips have to close completely. Air has to be built behind. Slight air pressure has to be built behind closed lips and released with an audible plosion. Vocal cords are, of course, vibrating. Ba. From there, the tongue goes straight into the lateral position. Okay, where the uh, it's long and narrow, and the air vocal cords are vibrating. The tongue is this way grooved like this, and the air is passing by the sides of the tongue. Ball, and it is not ball. It's just ball. All these movements are required. If I have to say ball or ballet, then again l and the vowel a, I will have to say. For, for that, we used to do phonetic transcription. It shows exactly all the sounds that are made by your vocal cords. And that shows you how many movements that are required. You will be amazed. Just for ball, that many movements are required. So, these are highly, you know, highly... Fine motor activity, fine motor activity is required for speech when a person doesn't have gross motor movements like holding, walking and uh, you know crawling, feeding, these are gross motor movements, nothing fine required, okay. When a person doesn't have fine uh, gross motor activities, how difficult, it's almost impossible for them to have the fine motor activities required for saying a simple word like ball. So this is the role of the motor. So see, speech requires all, all, all the brain's faculties. Sensory, hearing, motor, the movement, and the cognitive, which is the meaning. All three are required for speech and language. For walking, only motor is required. For eating or whatever it is, only motor. I have to be able to have this thing. Okay. For any other sort of same uh, sensory, of course, you need all the senses for everything. And cognitive has to be there for everything. Isn't it? All three activities. Now here, she has got the sensory input. And, uh, but because the motor is not there, speech will not be there. So here again now in certain cases like a cerebral palsy where the motor control is very limited, there is nothing reason to hold back the child from the cognitive part. Mm. Now that little Danita who comes, Tamanna's child, mm. I have told her that look for motor her expressive speech, she has got to take a long time. But that doesn't mean we have to hold her back for understanding of speech. So you see to it that she has begun to understand some of the things that you see. And I want evidence of that. Every time I ask her, what is it that you say which she can understand and she gives you a sign that she has understood. So comprehension of speech, there is nothing to stop them. But for that you have to use language. Mm. The same principle of language development, language, the particular sounds occurring, she's also deaf. Mm -hmm. First, we have to get the evidence that the child is hearing. Okay, because there is no way she can say, mm -hmm. no. There is no way we can do a pure tone with her. Then, we have to see that she is now processing sound, that she's understood, has heard the sound, and she knows that this is the meaning of that particular sound. Teaching multiple handicaps is even more difficult. Deafness is difficult enough. 
But mothers do that.